Good morning, good morning, my beautiful listeners, and welcome to another episode of and I want to say again, how did you show? Well, re- 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 we rebranded the show to The Endless Mindset. So welcome to another episode of The Endless Mindset. Um, as you can see, we got the lights on. So it's not because it's so late. It's actually it's because it's so early in the UK today because I'm having a very, very special guest with me today all the way from Dubai. Someone who I genuinely call my sister from another mister, uh, oh. who I'm finding more and more. And we have more and more in common. Very, very inspiring friend of mine, Lucy Parker. Hi, Lucy, and welcome Hello. to the show. <laughs> Hi, Lenka. Thank you so much for welcoming me on this podcast. And um, I just love that. You know, I love your title and I love the fact that you're here to, you know, help others succeed and inspire others. So God bless you. I'm so excited to share well, and oh. hope I can inspire as well. <laughs> oh, Lucy, thank you so much. That's so lovely. And absolutely, this is this is why you're here, because you are so inspiring. <laughs> this is why you're here. I absolutely, you know, we've, we've been following each other now for a while, and uh, you are inspiring in so many different ways. And I just thought that you need to come here and talk to, uh, and tell us the story. Tell us your story. So, yeah, we can't wait to share more. So, for those who don't know Lucy, so as I said so far, you are, or, 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 for those who don't know you or all they know so far is that you live in Dubai so tell for those who don't know Lucy tell us a little bit more about you who is okay Lucy? sure absolutely well obviously I'm from the UK I'm English um and I'm here in Dubai as a real estate agent so I sell Dubai real estate um so I've been in this industry for nearly 18 years Lenka believe it or not um 10 years here in Dubai uh six years in Oman which is the country next door and then I also did uh just just under two years in France in the French Alps and in Perpignan in the southwest so yeah I speak French um so before because I know we all have our identity uh like you know as to what we do for work but it's so not you know our identity right that's just who I am or what I do um but for those of you um that perhaps aren't familiar so before my real estate days um I used to travel the world as an international tour guide so I would take you watching you know on amazing adventures all over the world, maybe trekking, snowboarding, diving, windsurfing, playing tennis, you name it, I've led the tour um, for four years. And it was so much fun, Lenka. Wow. But the problem was, it was not really very well paid. Um, wow. And I got hold of the very famous book, which we all know and love, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And I was like, wait a minute. Okay, so I'm having an amazing life. I'm traveling the world. Uh, but I'm really not saving any money at all. And in fact, you know, I wasn't even earning enough to be able to pay my way in life. It was, you know, it was, you get the good and the bad with travel, right? So it, uh, that was where I made a decision. And I made a decision that real estate was my future because I love people. Um, I love property. It is extremely well paid. And I get to meet new people every single day. It's not boring. It's not an office job and it's not a nine to five. That's literally me sitting there one day making that decision. And here I am. Wow. 18 years later. So, yeah. <laughs> and and it's not in your home country. You're still sort of traveling because you are in Dubai. So, you are you know, you're still somewhere abroad as well. You know, exotic country. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think it's sunshine, you know. Um, So I was brought up in the South Pacific in Vanuatu and Fiji until I was eight. So, you know, for me, it's very normal to be in in the sunshine, you know, by the beach. That that's my life. That's what I, that's the only thing I knew. Um, I didn't feel English. I didn't know about England really until I was eight uh, when we moved back to the UK. So I had my school years in England, you know, from eight till 18 and then university in uni in, in the UK. But apart from that, I've pretty much every Every, every possible day I could, I could then I would travel <laughs> and I would oh. leave the country. This is, so, one, this yeah. is one of the things I completely admire about you because um, I've done some travel as well, but nowhere near as much as you did. And um, uh, loads of people do want to travel, but never do. Or loads of people yeah. dream about it. And uh, there's always some reasons why they wouldn't. And you're just one of those. It's like, I want to travel. I'll go for it. I'm going for it. And you just go. Yeah. And you just, you just. What you do. Yeah. Even before we, <laughs> even be. Sorry. Sorry, I was going to I was going to say, you see, the thing about travel, I would imagine what most people have is a fear. OK, and it's the fear of the unknown. And I respect that and I appreciate that everybody's different. But the fact is, um, a lot of what we think about when we get on a plane and go to a new country is guess what? from the media. 
okay and the media is so so incorrect you know it's sensationalism it is the 0.0000001% of actually what life is like reality yeah um, and you get to the country and literally you're like well what happened to there was supposedly like you know terrorists here or there was some meant to be bombers here do you know what i mean and it's nothing like that <laughs> so, absolutely you know and and the other thing that is so important is i truly believe in the kindness of strangers and it doesn't matter where they're from how much money they have um nobody is really out to get you um and i think a lot of us from the first world countries believe that they are out to get us that you know they are gonna you know take things from us and and it's really not the case you know no. humans are humans so, absolutely i yeah. love that it's well 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 said very beautifully said <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I've experienced, I've lived in, for those, I don't know, for, for, for my listeners, I don't know who knows, I, I've been, I lived uh, six months in, in, in combined, uh, six months uh, in Tanzania, doing volunteering work in Africa and also in like a very rural area. And, um, and as you said, that the media makes it, I mean, there's a lot of truth, but there's also a lot of untruth in how it looks like that and how, how it actually really is. And it's yeah. just one of those as well. It's like, if you, if if you're too scared to go and experience yourself, you always just believe uh, you, you, you know the perspective of life. It's only from what you see, really. But yeah, when you experience things yourself, it's just a very different. You you just have a very different uh, way of looking at life and very different way of looking at the the, 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 the that country, for example, or something. So yeah, it's you can embrace humanity a lot more easily. Um, and you know, like it. You, you know, we're all here to be, to, to love and care for each other. Of course, there are people out there that, um, you know, have, have, you know, whatever bad intentions. And, and I'm not, I'm not denying that. But ultimately, you know, how I live my life, Lenka, is that I believe, um, I, I trust everyone until otherwise proven so. Um, and that, that's how I've lived my life always. And, and it, and it works. It really works. Yeah, <laughs> it's much nicer way of living than being always like suspicious or something. It's just like, you know, as you said, like, I love yeah. that when you said you trust everyone until you prove otherwise. And that's nice. I, yeah. I'm a very much same. You just, you know, you just love everyone, just love everyone. And then unfortunately, sometimes life has, you know, throw, throw some negative, some bad to it. But most, most of the time, everything is really nice. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, and you know you know the other thing as well lenka that you know yes that could be some of you watching think yeah she's so naive saying trust everyone um but the thing is you know there are people out there that are going to you know uh just be unkind to you or, or whatever but i believe that it's all to do with your mindset your own mindset and you know there's only one thing that you can control and that is how you react to a situation or a person um you can't control somebody else so you know if that person isn't like you they don't think like you they don't have the same opinion as you then i would just walk away you know yeah. because they are different and i respect that but Absolutely. they're just not my kind of people <laughs> exactly and that's part of life yeah. as well and we can't always please yeah. everybody and yeah, absolutely. You know, me and my best friend, we have we are best friends for like 13 years and we have a motto, let's agree to disagree. We come we are so oh, yeah. different in so <laughs> many ways, but we are still best friends. So sometimes people even being different, having different opinions, that doesn't yeah. mean that they can't be friends. Like we are best friends and literally our motto is let's agree to disagree. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's true. Yeah, it is, isn't it? So, and you know, with some people it works, some people it doesn't. But yeah, that's life, isn't it? And 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 it's part of life as well to to kind of like finding your tribe as well, isn't it? So you know, not everybody's gonna be in your tribe, and you need to find them. So <laughs> yeah, your tribe sets your vibe. Exactly, <laughs> you're definitely part of my tribe. You haven't. An, oh, you can't escape. Now. You can't escape. And we've in. never met. We still and haven't we, met. Lincoln, so. We've never met. I know this is the craziest part, but this is this is one of the beauties of internet. When you know, when as, as much as we're hearing bad things about internet, this is one of the most beautiful things about internet. Is that the connections, the friendships we can create, and yeah, it's like as I said, I genuinely call you my sister from another country, Mister, and I never even met you. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, yeah uh, right <laughs> it is isn't it right lucy so you tell us a little bit about, about background you're a big traveler you tell us about what you do and you are in a um and you, you you're in a real estate suit so, so we know so so you you, you how, how how did you actually like um ended up living in dubai and doing the the estate agency why dubai 
Why did you? Yeah, just- sure. Um, so actually, it started. You have to go back to Oman because what happened was I was in France and um, I decided to start my career in real estate nearly eighteen years ago, and um, I had one trip left to lead as the tour guide before that was over. Okay, and once you've proven yourself, and I'd been there four years as a tour guide, they pretty much say to you, right, where do you want to go? Can you imagine? Basically, you've got the world map, and they say, where do you want to go? that we have a tour to and you can lead it because they trusted me. They knew I, you know, I was experienced. So I was one of these people because I'm very curious. I want to get to know every country on the planet. By the way, that's a goal of mine. I know I told you, Lenka, but for your audience, my goal, one of my goals is to visit every country on the planet. um, And I've done 75. So I said to myself, okay, I don't know anything about the Middle East. I don't know anything about the Gulf. Actually, it's a bit scary. Then I'm going to go there. (laughs) No. tour going to Oman and I said right I'm gonna lead this tour so uh what happened was when I arrived in Oman so I'd started real estate in France and I had a two-week holiday so I went to lead a tour also being paid um when I got to Oman I fell in love with the country and I also fell in love (laughs) and I decided you know what I don't want to stay in France anymore I want to be in Oman And so I followed my heart and I was like, you know what? Life's too short. Uh, Moved everything to Oman, to the Gulf. And Oman is a very, in fact, it's the safest country on the planet. I've never been to a safer country. Um, And they are so kind. So I moved to Oman. The British are really, you know, well looked looked on because we helped them in the wars uh, between all the states of, of Oman in the 50s. So they love the British. So um, and, you know, we get we can find jobs very easily there. So I found uh, a job in a tour company and it was really because I just wanted to be there next to my love. Um, and it just so happened. This is absolute destiny and coincidence that within four weeks of arriving in Oman and being with this British couple in their tour company, kind of like leading tours and helping tours and doing dolphin, you know, glass bottom boat tours, you name it, I did it. Um, they were like, okay, we're going to start a real estate company. Okay. And we'd like you to join. Can you imagine? Like wow. that was not on the cards when I arrived in Oman wow. and I just started real estate in uh, France. So basically that was the beginning of the Gulf opening up to us foreigners to buy property. So wow. I just happened to be in the right place at the right time. Um, just he happened. Was ex- Mind yeah. It. <laughs> yeah, he was ex-military, so extremely driven, very disciplined, knew exactly what he was on. Uh, she, his wife, was mar- a marketer. So the two of them were just phenomenal. I learned so much from them. And I also bought my first property there. They bought their property. I bought a property. And the minute I bought a property, Lenka, it was like I just opened the doors. Everybody wanted to buy because I could literally look my clients in the eye and say, well, I've bought. I put my money where my mouth is. And then it, we just were selling and it was absolutely going crazy. That was 2005, wow. 2006. Um, and yeah, basically that all went, you know, s- swimmingly. And then uh, things unfortunately didn't work out for me personally um, in my own personal life there. So um, and I could have stayed there forever. I had an amazing career. So I was like, you know what? I need a fresh start. Um, and of course, I'd lo- always heard about Dubai next door, right? You know, it was there. It was it was the big sister. It was doing everything bigger and better than Oman. Yeah. Um, but for some reason, I just decided I didn't want, I wanted a fresh start. So I chose, because this is what I do in life, Lenka. I just suddenly make a decision and I go for it. I don't, you know, when I've made a decision, I don't look back. OK, I don't decide, oh, should I? I don't have paralysis analysis. I think that that holds a lot of people back. I don't write on a list. What are the pros to go? What are the cons for not? You know, you don't do that. I just make a decision and I go because at the end of the day, the only thing that can happen is it doesn't work out. And I just change change where I'm going. So I decided to go to the French Alps to a beautiful ski resort called Megève. It's kind of like the Aspen of the French Alps. It's actually a secret. Most of us. Europeans, we ski the whole of our lives in the front in the French Alps. We've never heard of Megev. It's very posh. Okay. So you've got like a Chanel as you come down the slopes as well. It's crazy. Um, and that's also uh Cor- um Courcheval next door. So I decided to go to Megev. Why? Because everything I did is on purpose. So firstly, it's the wealthiest destination in the French Alps. A lot of the Gulf Arabs go there. Remember, I just come from the Gulf. Yeah. Um, I speak French. I love snowboarding, so I wanted to snowboard every day. 
Um, and I understood a bit of Arabic. And so I called up Sotheby's and they took me then and there. They were like, can you start like right this minute? And I said, well, no, I have to go back to Oman, <laughs> pack up and move here. That will take me like six weeks. <laughs> But it took me six weeks. I packed up my whole life, shipped everything to Geneva, to Mejev. I landed in a town, Lenka, and I do a lot of training for real estate agents. And I always use this story, right? So nothing is impossible. I landed in this village in the middle of January, completely snowed in. My first day at work, I had to hitch a ride, okay? My first day at work. I couldn't get my car out of the snow. So I hitched a ride. I didn't know anyone. And I was here to sell property. What am I going to do? Okay. So I hitched a ride with this lovely lady. Turns out she was a doctor. Turns out she gave me a chalet to sell day one. Oh <laughs> my goodness. I mean, can you imagine that? You know? <laughs> can you imagine? Because we just got chatting and I told her I'm going to Sotheby's. She drove me to the office. She was going into town. You're just, just like a amazing. magnet on those things. It's mindset, isn't it? It's like, you're, what are you putting out there? <laughs> yeah, well, like, you know, you, I, I talk to people and, and I'm passionate about what I do and I was really excited. And then for the rest of that season, I literally went from door to door, knocking on the door and introducing myself and saying, I'm here to sell real estate. How can I help you? And I made friends, um, had properties and had an amazing time. Uh, but I did decide after nine months that, you know what? France probably wasn't for me because there was a lot of tax that I was paying there, right? <laughs> and this is where I was like, this is crazy. I've been living in the Gulf, paying no tax. Now I'm in France. I'm loving being in France, but <laughs> I'm paying half my money to the government and I don't want to do that. And that's when I made a decision. Okay, I'm going back to the Gulf because I miss it and I'm going to Dubai. And that literally was, uh, I arrived in Dubai, August the 29th, 2012. And yeah, that's me. That's where I am. <laughs> wow! But but, yeah. but by then you already have exper you already know what, what what industry you want to be in. You already have experience living in a you know you are like in a, in the Arabic Emirates. You you've been in back in Europe, and you're like, no, I want to be back down there. I know what I'm doing. I know what I want to be doing. And so yeah, there you go. So now you yeah. are in. Du so now you're in Dubai, knowing what you're gonna do. Wow. Well Lenka, I was, but you know, again, and this this helps those in, you know your audience watching um, as well because the thing is, there was still so much against me because when I came to Dubai, nobody would give me a job in real estate. Can you believe it? Now in Oman, what I didn't tell you was, um, you know, I was the most successful salesperson. I was running a sales team. We'd open better homes, three of us as a franchise. So I had all the reputation and the experience. But I land in Dubai and suddenly nobody knows me and I don't know Dubai and nobody will give me a job. And that put me back a lot in my mind. But of course, you don't you don't give up, right? Because you know you can do it. So you of just got to prove it. You've got to prove it. Um, and so I decided, well, the only way to do this is to go and work for um, a developer. So like in, in Europe, you call it like a builder, but they, you know, they're built like, uh, what would you call it? Is it Bart? Uh, what's um Barclay Homes? You know, like Barclay Homes is oh, a yes. developer. Okay, oh yes, right? yes, so yes. it's like that. So you're working for them. You're salaried. By the way, I don't like being salaried a nine to five, but I had no choice. Yeah, I wanted to buy so bad, I had to forfeit something for the for the short term in order to have what I want for the long term. So I went to work for a developer. Um, and um, it was an Indian developer. So they wanted me to come in and like westernize their sales team and, you know, like just give it a different angle. And um, and what did I have to do? I mean, I didn't even think about this part, but my job was to present the project to every agency in, in Dubai. And what happened? All the agencies got to know me, see me at work. And then all of them were calling me within six <laughs> months. Saying, do you want to join us? Do you want to join us? Do you want to sell? And then I could choose. So it was wow. perfect. And as you said, you just done something short term for something you needed to do in the long term. And look, you just, yeah. you just, you've just you yeah. done something. You were like, right, I need to do this. And then doors start opening to you. Yeah. It and just you know what? Working for a developer was a really good experience um, because, you know, like funnily enough, later on, little did I know that um, I then, you know, was was actually heading up Keller Williams. So I was headhunted to run Keller Williams for Dubai. And guess what my key role was? Recruitment and training. So had I not had that experience in a developer's office, I wouldn't have understood different people's mentality in the industry and how they look at real estate and how us agents look at real estate. So 
everything culminates, doesn't it? There's all there's Absolutely. a reason if we look back at everything that's happened in our lives, it has brought us to exactly where we need to be today. I'm Absolutely. a great believer in that. Huge, yeah. I'm a huge believer as well. And uh, it, it, it's like things happen for a reason. Always things happen for a reason. And yeah. if you're believing in that and you trust the process, like yeah. life will, life will reward you for it because we just have to trust it, isn't it? It's like mm. you know, like, like when you when you when you're really working towards something you really want to do and you trust the process, then yeah, the the, the, the reward will the the, the 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 reward and the the reasons why things happen that way will appear will show itself basically sort of thing like yeah. it will, yeah so well done well done girl yeah. <laughs> that's amazing Lucy so now it's been 18 years you've been in there is that correct Almost 18 years in real estate yeah 10 years in Dubai 10 yeah. years in Dubai. oh yeah 2000 yeah 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 so 10 years in Dubai wow what a journey and you are very well known yeah. so I call you a queen of Facebook as well you're a queen of social media so yes. this is how so you <laughs> obviously this is one of the re one of the things I obviously want you to share with the with the with the um listeners sorry I still have my, my brain is still not fully awakened <laughs> i'm still struggling to find <laughs> words um, sorry i've woken you up so early <laughs> no 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 this is really <laughs> um so um yeah so you're using social media a lot as well uh for yes. uh, like marketing as well i i i would i assume yeah or can i call it like a marketing and you also well Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no, let, let me explain. So so actually, um, I got into social media really from 2007. So I think, you know, I believed in LinkedIn from day one. The day I saw LinkedIn, I was like, wow, this is not about jobs and CVs. This is a lot bigger and it's going to be bigger. So I, I could foresee what was coming with LinkedIn. And every single day I would add more people, add more people. I have 44,000 followers, Lenka, and that's over 15 years, right? So in the grand scheme of things, it's not that big. Um, because I have been consistent every single day. I have added new people. I have posted on LinkedIn. If it's not every day, it's every other day. You can go check my LinkedIn for anyone watching. Um, and people get to know you and they're like, Lucy's there again. And I'm always sharing real estate. So it's like, they know I'm there and I'm hitting people's feed, uh, because I love Dubai and I love real estate. So I share what I love. Um, do I sit, do I wake up every morning and say, right, I need to market a house today on social media? No, no. I don't think like that. And that is where people go wrong because I actually train people on how to stand out on social media. And most people come to me because they're like, oh, I haven't got the hours in the day for my planning and my content. And how do you strategize? And I'm going to be completely honest here, Lenka. I don't strategize. Well, you don't. <laughs> You can tell. I get my phone and I'm like, I really want to share that with people. And I just share it. And I don't uh -huh. know what time of day it is. There is nothing methodical. I mean, yes, of course, there are a couple of things that, you know, like if, if I need to share it with a French audience, I'm aware that the French aren't awake for three or two more hours. And, you know, if I want to share something with a US audience, then I don't share something till pr perhaps like four or five o'clock in the afternoon my time because I know the USA is waking up. But do I go on Facebook and everything is strategy and everything is planned in a diary? Absolutely not, you know? And that is, social media is really you showing who you are. And people yeah. want to get to know you first. They want to get to trust you. They want to get to see what lights you and, you know, what are you passionate about? And that's when people choose to work with you, right? Yeah, amazing. I love that. So true. <laughs> and it's like, so... um. So, as you said, social media, if it's used correctly, it can really, really, it can really do a lot of good. And as you said, it's like, it's not only about sharing the, the house. Yes. Yeah? So it's like, it's not, I'm not going to pr promote the property. You're promoting yourself. It, it's, it's, it's a people's business. Yeah. And you basically, it's, it's about, it's about a human talking to humans. It's not about like, I have this house. Do you want to buy this house? It's not that. Because as you said, you're sharing about yourself because it's a people's business. And if 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 someone doesn't like someone or if that, if you don't have a good vibe from someone, you don't really want to do business with them, for example. Yeah, I mean, yeah. not everybody, but I mean, yeah. personally. Yeah? And, and if you share about yourself and people get to know you, they know who Lucy is and they want to work with you or they want to follow you. They want to know more about you. So it's yeah. not like they, they, the house can be bought from anyone that there's so many people can sell houses. It's yeah. about the person. Yeah. 
So yeah, yeah I love the way you said that. And you know what? Absolutely. I'm not using LinkedIn enough. Like I actually don't use LinkedIn. And every time oh. I speak to you, I always feel like I can't get on the LinkedIn. And then I don't do. And then I speak to you again and you remind me about LinkedIn. And I was like, I need to get on LinkedIn. And then yeah, I you do. LinkedIn's very powerful. It is. It's really important to have LinkedIn. I'll tell you why I use Link, uh, LinkedIn Lenka, because a lot of people that are buying real estate from me are actually not even in Dubai. They're not in the country. So they're so they're overseas somewhere. They're yeah. never going to meet me, right, before they decide whether to buy. I mean, people buy from me. They've never met me. They've never got on a plane to Dubai. That's that's how I, a lot of the sales I've done recently. So what do people do? Well, what do we all do when we go on holiday? What do we do when we check out hotels to book? We go on the TripAdvisor. So we book, rev- we look at reviews. We read about, you know, should I buy this book on Amazon? We read reviews, testimonials. So LinkedIn for me, I believe, and I'll never know for sure, is people can read about what others have said about working with me, social proof. Social proof is so important, right? Because I can tell you that I'm good. That doesn't mean anything. I might not be good. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Start to see a client and you can check out who they are. And you're like, wow, they, you know, work in the government in the UAE. They've used Lucy as an agent. Now I feel a bit more comfortable. So LinkedIn is very important for testimonials and reviews. And, you know, anyone watching, go have a look at mine. I mean, again, because I've been on for 15 years, I have a lot now. I mean, I think I have over 50. Um, But, you know, when somebody writes some really nice words to me after a a deal or a transaction, I will always ask them, uh, would it be okay if uh, you could write that for me on LinkedIn? And that yeah. everyone says yes. It's really Amazing. nice. Right, Lucy, yeah. I'm gonna one day I'm gonna pick your brain. If you don't mind, I'm gonna pick your brain on LinkedIn because I need to get on the board. I need to get on board on that. <laughs> well, Lenka, funnily enough, so just again for those watching, um, and maybe we can put some kind of link in this video. Um, I have a social media course that I offer to people. So it's nine week course, and it is all about how to build your brand, what type of content. Um, thinking about your audience. And there is a part about, you know, like the different, um, you know, social media forums. So you've got the Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook, YouTube. Um, and also about like, if you're not comfortable getting on the camera on a live, I, I urge everyone watching, you must go live. Okay, everyone. Uh-huh. And the thing is, so many people are like, no, I'm really scared. I'm really scared. But the fact is, it's simply this question I ask you. And that is right. When you meet a client in person, what are you doing? You're live. You're live, You're live with a client. So yeah. why would you be worried about being on a screen where there's actually no one in front of you? There's just a screen. Yeah. This is what I don't get. And um, if you're so unhappy about how it went, then delete that video at the end of the day. You know, it's like, yeah. if you really, yeah. really like, oh, I hated it, then okay. <laughs> It's like, yeah. that's so true. I love that. I love that. Yeah. It's like, as you said, it's like, yeah, when you meet someone, you're live. Yeah. You're live with the client or the friend or whoever. I mean, we all meet, you know, in the old days, guess what? We all used to meet for coffees and we used to meet in the office and we'd have meetings together. So really, that's all no right. different to going live on a video. Right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. No, I, you know, that is very well put. Very, very well put. Love that. <laughs> <laughs> and Lucy, um, like I just realized obviously in our time it's uh, ticking today because obviously you have a very very busy girl and you have other things to do and on my zoom it's popping out different things so you said so you got you got nine weeks course which is teaching about social media tell us yes. a little bit yeah. about that when does it start yeah sure that? um so basically it's online and it's me talking on a video so you get me talking to you um it's nine courses i would ima- i would um recommend you do it every week because there's work to do which funnily enough is actually going on your social media and and doing stuff no <laughs> Um, And it is, I did target it for real estate agents to start with or people in the real estate industry. But there's other people that have now taken this course and they were like, Lucy, it doesn't matter what what industry you're in. You could just literally where you're talking about selling a house, you could be talking about selling a painting or a necklace or, you know, a coaching service. So it's more about, you know, how do you get into the social media world and be comfortable and most importantly, be you, be authentic. You know, that's that's what it's all about. Um, And as I said earlier, you know, people think too much about a strategy, too much about paralysis analysis, and they don't actually do anything. And the best thing you could do, I urge everyone watching after this podcast is just go live, just go live. 
they even say hello people oh. will love it uh, you know what now you're making me want to go live and just talk about everybody about like this podcast we just had and just go live yes. and like, Lucy, Lucy told me it. to go live so I'm going live <laughs> just do it honestly just do it I you know amazing. Like, you're amazing as well you will easily you'd be an amazing live because your energy is phenomenal Aww. so Thank you. Well, I don't. Yeah, I don't do lives. I don't do lives in now. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm. I'm gonna have to start. I'm fully aware of the power of it. So, um, yeah. I'm. I started to work more on my social media this year, in the last few months, and I'm building something for next year. So I'm. I'm starting to work on it. So fingers crossed. And right. life should be one right. of those. You know things. Amazing. Yeah, just do give us a link. Do give us a link so then I can post it everywhere. And yes, I will yeah, do. I'll definitely share with the yeah. world. Well <laughs> done, Lucy. Uh, that's amazing. Now, Lucy, just another thing I wanted to ask you because obviously the the name of this episode is how discipline, you know, can also change your life. And you are very much into like, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. And but that yeah. obviously discipline comes a lot with it as well. So as we know, you've done it with your travels, you've done it with, um, uh, you know, you wanted to live in a different country, you uh, you learn different language, you you want to do social media, you know, you 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 just kind of started a course on social media. So you're a perfect example. And one of the things you've done, one of the things I followed you as well was. Um, You've done a 75 hard. So 75 yes. hard, for those who don't know, it is a really quite quite tough fitness challenge. I've done it myself as well. I failed on the last day, I'll be honest. Uh, I oh. failed on the, literally on the last, but purposely, purposely. It's a long story. This is not why we're here now. But um, I failed purposely on the last day, um, which is on the 75th day. Um, but basically 75 hard, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a quite tough uh, fitness challenge. And Lucy, tell us more about yours because you, you finished your, and then you continued with another phases which is like wow yes. tell us so i mean look 75 day hard the reason for 75 days is because a habit is formed i believe after 60 to 66 days okay so if for those of you about to start new year's resolution you're all going to fail sorry to say this if you do it for january and then you give up because 30 days is not yet ingrained into you it's like a habit we all know is brushing our teeth we do our teeth and we don't even think about it right so you have got to get to a stage where you don't think about what you do. And that is why the 75 days, first of all, is important. The second is you have to do two workouts a day. Now, the word workout does not mean you're doing a Jane Fonda workout or whatever, you know, like crazy jumping up in the air. Workout means move your body. Yeah. So whether you are doing like a workout in the gym, whether you are power walking, whether you are cycling, whether you're swimming, whether you're yoga, you're still moving, whether you're skipping, okay? As long as you're working out twice a day, 45 minutes each, one of them has to be outside. And the power of that is that you're going to be in really treacherous weather. There's going to be a gale, there's going to be wind, there's going to be thunder, rain, snowstorms, and you still have to go outside. And you have to do it because you don't quit because we don't quit on the 75 day challenge. So it's the mindset. The mindset yeah. is so powerful in this challenge, right? The next thing is you have to drink a gallon of water a day. Ideally, you get up and you just drink a whole bottle like first. I do. A, I mean, I've already done two bottles because I've been at the gym this morning. Then I've drunk another one. This is my third like this today. Amazing. Okay, And it's 11. It's 1130 a.m. for me. So we don't drink enough water. But by drinking, we're flushing through all the toxins. It's healthy. And guess what? We don't want to eat so much food because we're full. Yeah. So we're, really, we're made up 70% of our body by water. Okay. The fourth thing is that you have to eat a healthy living, uh, a healthy diet. Now you choose that. So, you know, you're, you're the one that's holding yourself accountable. If you want to cheat, you cheat, but you're not going to get any, anywhere. And I'm assuming that you're not that type of person. So I'm a vegan. I eat fish and I was protein three meals a day. And I decided no chocolates, no sweets, um, and nothing like sugary drinks. The other thing is you do not drink alcohol. Now that's a big one for most people. Um, I purposely did it over my birthday. I'll be doing it again over my birthday this year. Um, no alcohol, not one drop. Okay. For 75 days and all that, you also have to take an updated photo of yourself every day, whether you share it, that's up to you, but you have it in your phone every day. Trust me, those photos are so rewarding when you get to the end. The last thing of all is that if you get, let's imagine you're on day 44 and you get to 11.30. Oh, I forgot one more. You have to read 10 pages of a business book or a self-development book every day, 10 pages. And I nearly failed 
on one day, because as I was going to give you an example now, imagine it's 11.30 at night, you're exhausted, you've got into bed, it's day 44 and you haven't done your reading. What happens is if you don't do your reading and it's, the clock strikes midnight, you failed. Yeah. Now you go back to day one. You don't go tomorrow to day 45. And so this is all about time management. So Lenka, this challenge is about mindset. It's about discipline. It's not really about losing weight. But yes, I I lost a heck of a lot of weight. But that's not why I went into it. I went into it because I like to compete against myself. And I want to see if I can do it. And I did it. Okay. And so you want to go when you wake up in the morning, you already want to think, okay, when am I going to do my workouts? One of them, obviously, I do straight away when I wake up. The second one gets tough because I meet clients. They want to, you know, meet, go and see properties. I'm in real estate or they want to go for dinner. And I have to think in my mind, right, I'm going to say eight o'clock so I can quickly whiz around the park on a power walk because I know eight, I'll probably be with them till 1130 at night. I don't want to fail. So it's time management. It's yeah. actually the killer. You've got to make sure you manage your day. Yeah, that's a very well put. So wow, it is. It it was tough, isn't it? It's like it's a lot. It's a lot yeah. to, as you said, it's it's a lot to remember. As you said, it could be uh, eleven o'clock in the evening. You are so tired, and you are like yep. a book. I need to do my book, or I still need yeah. to do whatever that was. The a song. workout, yeah? yeah, 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 exactly. And yeah, I the only reason why I failed, as I said to you, like I failed on the last day, it was because I was, uh, we had the it, it was the alcohol thing, and it was because oh. we've been um. There's a do you know do you know a DJ called Carol Cox? No. No. So basically he's a house music uh, DJ and right. I love house music since I'm 13. So yeah. now we're living in Slovakia, grew up in Slovakia. There's no one never famous there. So Carol Cox right. is someone I loved since I'm 13 and I'm someone who doesn't even know people's name. I don't know celebrities' names. I don't know okay. people's names. And Carol Cox was someone I just loved for, I mean, loved for a long time and admired for a very, very long time. Um, my friend got us tickets in uh, Torbay. It was a it was a festival, first yeah. festival after after COVID, and it was like after first festival after like three years, four years, and yeah. it was on the last day of seventy five hard, and the Carol Cox was playing. My like I I'm a big fan from since thirteen is the first festival in like four years, and we to be fair, I haven't drunk afterwards me and Andy we had the drink on the festival but we didn't drink week after we literally just said you know what let's just enjoy a festival it's the last day so we've done the workout we've done a book and everything and we enjoyed the festival and then we've been uh, and then we punished ourselves for another week so we kind of punished ourselves for a week after if that makes oh, sense oh you gotta do it again now <laughs> I know I know but I'm, I'm just I'm at least I'm saying I'm, I'm open. I'm open about it because yeah, you're honest. You're honest. I'm, about yeah, it. I am not hiding yeah. anything. I'm literally. I'm just saying. I felt on the last day, and it was one of those. It was like you know what? I'm going to enjoy the festival with friends. It yeah. was the first yeah. festival in a long time, and I was like, yeah, yeah it's Carol Cox. I'm going in. <laughs> no, I'm um, Lenker. I'm aware of the time now. It's about to cut out. But what I would say is about the 75 day challenge. Um, and I love that you're so honest with everyone. Is there is always going to get life is going to get in the way. That's the whole point of the challenge, exactly. that no matter what, no matter what, you've got to do 75 days. Yeah, so what I was saying was the whole point of the 75 day hard is that life does get in the way. There will always be something that comes up. Oh, well, there's an earthquake today. I can't go out and work out. You have to work out. There's people I've watched that there's been an earthquake and they've been outside, even in their garden, just jumping up and down. Um, or in COVID, look at what was his name, the gentleman who was 100 years old and how many laps he did when we couldn't go anywhere. So, so the whole point of the 75 day is life is going to get in the way and it's up to our discipline Absolutely. because look at the military you know in the military they can't just decide well i'll just not do it today um you know and then potentially put people's lives at risk or they get shot and yeah. so it was it was created by someone from the military um and i would definitely recommend you do it again but i'm i would love you to do it with me lenka so yeah i'm starting it um on the 15th 14th of january the reason i'm starting it then is because I'm going to work in an orphanage in Uganda in a very remote area. I already know that I won't be able to fulfill the 75 day because I don't think I'll have electricity to read a book. Uh -huh. um, and in the day I'll be with the children. So it's not to do with alcohol. I can work out because I'll walk everywhere. I just don't think I, you know, I don't want to fail. Yeah. I prefer to start on the 14th of January. So that's why I'm doing nice. that. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I'll keep that in mind. And I just, I might just join you because I'm <laughs> yes. I, I love challenging myself in things like that. So definitely. Definitely. Uh, do it. Do it.
you are but, but you more are. to the point Lenka I mean the whole, what happened was the reason I kept on doing it for the rest of the year and I did like phase one two and three was because I lost a lot of weight I changed my body 14 kg in three in 75 days um I've never ever had that body like I never had it like that before the confidence so, you had like true. because obviously yes. I, what I follow you the confidence you gained as well it's incredible yeah, it's yeah absolutely there's yeah. so much it's it's like Lucy you always been a very very like you always shine you were always very bubbly you were always very positive person but it does shows as well like the 75 heart it's not about just the losing weight it gives you so much confidence in everything else isn't it because you kind of like yes. you, have, you have a clearer mind you have you drink lots of water yes. you, you have so much more fresh air you move so much more more and- energy Yes. more energy and the fact yeah. is that the, uh, the the body changes that's naturally gives us more confidence doesn't it you feel yeah. so much better yeah. about yourself yeah so, and, and, it shows. And, and it shows and then because I was feeling so healthy um my business grew and I had the most successful year of my real estate career as well so you start with your health and it goes to your wealth and then from that you know you you attract other p- parts in your life and it's amazing. Like, you know, what a year. I can't wait to write down all my wins this year. So yeah, 75 oh. days changed my life for sure. Well <laughs> done. Well done. Honestly, Thanks, guys, for those who don't follow Lucy yet, follow, follow Lucy <laughs> because she is full of inspiration and um, yeah, definitely one of those people to follow. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you so reasons. much. Yes. You're an absolute superstar. Right, Lucy, as things are going to the end because obviously you need to crack on with the day. So yep. I'm going to ask every single uh, get, uh, every single of my guests, I'm asking this question, but you've been reading a lot of books during your 75 hearts. Oh uh, yeah, I read a lot, yeah. So what book would you recommend listeners to read? Oh, what you read? That, well, you see, I find this really difficult because I am a bookaholic. I read about 50 <laughs> books a year and I'm old fashioned. So this one I just love, Be Obsessed or Be Average, because by Grant Cardone, the language he uses in here will just turn any one of your viewers to think better. So if you want a book that will set your 2023 with a bang, read this book. The language is phenomenal. It's it's basically like you're here, you're on this planet, you're one of millions, you know, to even be born. What are you doing? Why are you playing average? You know, just get with it. And it doesn't mean obsessed as in, you know, addiction as in unhealthy. It's just, yeah. it's a play on words, right? So that is phenomenal. But I have to go, apart from Reach Dad, Poor Dad, which obviously is a life-changing book. This is my favorite book of all time. And I read it every year. Think and Grow Rich, Napoleon Hill. Um, you know, I, I've pinked out, I've, I've highlighted in this book everything that I just reread. Um, and it just, it's the beginning of everything that starts your day properly for success and for a different result. So everybody should read this book. I wished I'd read it when I was 14 or 13. But yeah, everyone should get this book, Lenka. Love this book. <laughs> well done. I love the recommendations. Yeah. I love the Napoleon Hill book. I've never read the uh, Grand Cardone one, Be Obsessed or Be Average. Heard of that book. Have not read that yet. So it's That's going on good. my list. And yeah, when, I'll be editing, when I'll be editing this, I'll definitely going to go um, on uh, Audible because I'm, I'm more an Audible person. Okay. And it's yep. just one of those that I've learned myself about myself that I f- I genuinely do more books if I listen to them. So I made a yep. piece with it that I, I read, I read, but I, I listen more. So oh, yeah. that's brilliant. That's it doesn't matter as long as it I'm- goes in. <laughs> exactly exactly so that's amazing wow. and lucy um love the recommendations and just one more thing i'll ask you as well if yep. you're gonna watch something uh, if you choose to watch something um could be educational or doesn't have to be educational what would you recommend people to watch what would be like oh lucy said watch this what that would be um well i actually don't watch a lot of television i'll be honest um so what i watch more is uh, motivational like speakers and videos um, I love Tony Robbins. So maybe if everyone here is, you know, into Netflix, then you know what? Put on Netflix. I am not your guru by Tony Robbins. I love that. Mm-hmm. Um, I've just been at his six day event, Date with Destiny. And he is a life changing man. I will say that much. So everybody, you've all got Netflix. Watch I am not your guru. It's amazing. Yeah, I loved your. I loved watching your uh, journey with um the, in uh, the the life with destiny in the, the, for those six days because you obviously yeah. you post about it as well and your That's energy amazing. and your smile from it it's it's effortless amazing. it's like it's yeah. like you smile and it's like oh it makes me happy yeah. <laughs> seeing you smile I'm gonna sh- I'm gonna Lenka I'm gonna show you and um everyone in the audience here so you actually create your own poster 
during the six days and wow. you've got here i've got my power virtues my four one-year goals for the year my vision for relationships my values for that are good and my wow. values that i don't want um and also my mission statement so every one of us created that for our 2023 so it's up i've printed it and i see it every minute it's there I in front that. of me. i love yeah. that <laughs> Absolutely love it. Well done. And I think I think it was a Tony Robbins, wasn't it? Who um um he um he pr- printed himself a, a house which he wanted to live in one day, and then he packed packed that packed that up. I'm talking years and years and years ago. Packed that up, and he was moving houses, whatever. And then he got himself a house with a family, um, and the uh, one of his boxes was still in the loft or somewhere like packed. He got to his box, opened up his box, and found a picture of the house he was actually living in, taken from a. Uh, the picture was taken from like a from like a helicopter, basically. So it basically was a house he was living in, and it was one of this. I hear that. I'm not mm-hmm. sh- I I think he was a Tony Robbins, but now I might yeah. be making it up because you're a big follower of his. And if you don't know this story, I might be making it up. But I really think it was him. So anyway, one of those people like Tony Robbins, uh, which I follow. And I, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna check it out because I think he was him. <laughs> anyway. anyway, it was basically uh-huh. one of those that how important it is to visualize. And he was like visualizing this. He had this house of his of his where he wants to be living in for a long time. He had this as a like a printed picture. And then over the years, like later on, you know, that, that picture got, you know taken down yeah. Yeah. house, married kids and all this and then he moved to his dream house found that box found that picture and is like this is my house this is the house i i was dreaming about yeah so yeah and i the reason why i'm saying it because we do know these stories but i think I, I i thought it was him so i thought it actually really works for everybody so yeah but i'll check that out that story i'll double check who, who, who that was <laughs> Definitely. Like your goals are very important, by the way. Um, always write down your goals and your vision. Mine's written down for next year. I have accountability groups. We check in every week with each other and we talk about our vision. I know what I'm doing in the next three years. I know my goals for the next month. I know my goals for this week and I do it on purpose every week. Yeah. Well done. There you go. Told you that you are inspirational. Very inspirational. <laughs> oh, well, thank <laughs> there you, Lenka. You well, thanks so much for today. And um, and hopefully, you know, I've been able to add some value to those watching. And uh, I would love to connect with people. If you're coming through Dubai or you're in Dubai or you're looking at Dubai, get in touch. Amazing. And then for those yeah. who need, who want to find you online, how do we find you? Where sure. do we find you? Um, best thing is probably to find me on Instagram. So it's Lucy J Parker underscore. So L U C Y J parker as in park your car p-a-r-k-e-r underscore so lucy j parker underscore um you can also find me on linkedin lucy parker and it's a picture it's like a pink symbol um on my facebook it is at my five thousand friends so um i have another facebook i don't use it so it's probably not the best place to find me on facebook um, and then I have a YouTube channel, which you can definitely subscribe to because I want to grow that massive this year and add more value. So my YouTube channel is Lucy Parker, and you will see lots of beautiful videos of Dubai and this whole city. It's amazing. It's a beautiful amazing. city. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I'm fully recommending for those listening and then follow you yet. Do, do follow her. Do follow yeah. Lucy. <laughs> amazing. Oh, thanks, Lucy, well, again, thank you ever so much for coming on the show today. Um, thank you. We, thank we, you. We, we wanted to do this for a while, didn't we? So I'm yes, glad we yeah. finally managed. <laughs> we finally done it, yeah. We finally done it. So yeah, thank you so much for coming. As I said, you are very inspiring and um, I love calling you my friend. As I said, I never met you in person, but the oh, connection yeah. sometimes you get from someone, it's- Yeah, you it's, can tell. It's more, energy. yeah, it's it's more valuable than anything. So I, uh, yeah, I really appreciate your friendship and um, yeah, good luck with everything. I don't need to thank wish you good luck because you don't need that. You, you just you just go for it. You go for things and you achieve everything, everything you always wanted. So oh. I have no doubt in that. So, and I can't thank wait. You, to, I can't wait to watch you. <laughs> oh thank you i just want to wish you a very merry christmas and to everyone watching i don't know when this podcast is going live and um massive 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 success for everybody and for you lenka for 2023 it's our year everybody let's go for it it. is our year thank you very much (laughs) merry christmas to you too my love and have a lovely rest of the day take care Bye. Bye. bye